you guys remember like eight months ago when I actually came out here and defended Classically Abby? Do you guys remember that? I did this video called In Defense of Classically Abby and then later that day I added a little addendum that said but not completely because some people were like oh my god you're defending Abby but she is homophobic and racist and horrible in general and she discriminates against other women and like yeah you're right it's true Abby is a terrible person in a lot of ways. She does take after her older brother Ben Shapiro quite a lot. That is not a joke for those of you who are new here. Classically Abby is literally Ben Shapiro's younger sister. By the way, Ben Shapiro, if you're watching this bud, I don't know, I probably mentioned this in a video before in the past, but you and I are the exact same height and weight. I looked up your stats online because the reason I did that is I wanted to know if it would be reasonable for us to have a boxing match. I think that the universe wants me and Ben Shapiro to have a YouTuber boxing match. YouTuber boxing matches are a big thing right now, right? And I think a truly capitalist god would not have made me and Ben Shapiro the same exact height and weight if he did not intend for us to have a boxing match that sells out on pay-per-view. So Ben Shapiro, let's set a time and date. We'll both start training our very hardest, and then we will see if cisgender men or women are better at sports. We'll find out because we are the same size, buddy. But today's video is not about Ben. It is about his younger sister, Abby. The reason that I defended Classically Abby back in February on this channel is that Abby was getting sexually harassed by lots of creepy men online. And here's the thing. If you are a terrible person, it's still not good to defend sexual harassment because then you're setting the precedent that the sexual harassment itself is okay. Especially because the reason Abby was getting harassed is that she has a very large chest. Now, at the time that I put out this video, I had just gotten breast reduction surgery like the week before. So I had had a very large chest up until that point. I've now had about three quarters of my breast tissue removed and I now can wear a double D cup bra instead of a K cup that belongs in a Keurig machine, right? So, I am very uh, alert for when people sexually harass others for their large boobs, considering that I know what it's like, Abby. We're not so different, you and I. So when I saw people out here taking pictures, finding these pictures of Abby from her baby shower where she was pregnant and her chest was even larger than usual because that's kind of what happens when you get pregnant. And then you had all these creepy dudes just leaving comments and posting these memes that were like, me when I'm imagining myself as Abby's future baby and it's like some dude pouring milk on himself. Like that shit's gross. And I was like, you know what? Nobody deserves that because even if Abby's a terrible person, like you don't want to set this precedent that that is an okay way to treat people because all that does is make it seem acceptable to do that to anyone, which is not okay. It makes other big titty girls in your life feel uncomfortable. So I was out here defending Abby and saying no one deserves to be sexually harassed. And you know how Abby repays me for that very kind gesture? By becoming the booby police. That's right. Abby has been out on social media policing the boobies, policing the chests, the breasticles. She has been policing it here on the internet. <laughs> And I'm like, Abby, God damn it, get you some nuts. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys uh, asked for it. What's up, my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy, and welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business. Today, we've got another Classically Abby video for you guys for my ongoing Classically Abby Exposed playlist. I hope you guys are having a good time. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe because multiple times a week, I put out new videos on this channel. And while you're at it, go ahead and ring that little notification bell as well. And while you're at that, maybe check out my second channel, Your Morning Guru, which is linked in the description below as well, which is my daily live stream channel where every single day we have a live stream at 7 a.m. Central time to get you up in the morning. We're kind of like a fun morning radio show, but more interactive because we talk back and forth with you guys. It's a lot of fun. And I have a soundboard now, so I've been playing with that. So we have even more fun with sound effects and things like that. So definitely check that out as well. Hello, a quick update from Savvy. You may have noticed that I'm wearing a different outfit right now than I was in the video. And that is because I filmed the video about Abby being the boob police. And then literally, this guys, this happens to me so often. Literally right after I finished filming it, 
Abby posts a new video on her channel called How to Look Modest and Attractive with a Bigger Chest. And I was like, well, if I'm going to make Abby as the boob police as a video, then I absolutely have to include a reaction to that in that. So I decided to film a little more. So that there's going to be more coming on to that towards the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. But before we get too deep into the topic today, first we're going to have a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is an online learning community featuring thousands of classes to help you explore your creative interests and develop new skills. If you tried to describe me savvy in one word, well, you probably couldn't. And that's because I have so many interests that it's ridiculous. Writing books is the main one, of course. And trust me, Skillshare has some great writing and book marketing classes. But I'm also constantly developing new hobbies related to art, fitness, design, and more. And that's one reason that I'm glad that a platform like Skillshare has such a wide variety of classes available all in one place. From art to web design to book marketing and more, you can use Skillshare to find classes that match your interests, hobbies, and skills that you want to learn or improve. As I mentioned last month, my favorite class that I've been taking on Skillshare so far is called Introduction to Polish Language, Master Polish Alphabet and Reading in Polish, taught by a woman named Veronica. Learning to speak Polish and especially to spell and pronounce words that are so different from English has been a major interest of mine over the past year, and I love that I can use Skillshare to supplement my learning journey. Because Skillshare is ad-free, you can stay focused while learning new skills. New premium classes launch each week, and Skillshare's entire catalog is available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. To join Skillshare, click the link in my description below where the first 1,000 people will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. I hope that you all enjoy learning on Skillshare as much as I have been, and thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's talk about Abby, okay? So here is what Abby said the other day that really got me fired up, and then we're going to take a look at some more stuff, okay? First of all, I want to make something clear. Abby is still out here getting sexually harassed, which I don't support whatsoever, okay? I was on her Instagram recently. Boop. I was on her Instagram. And ever since Abby had a child, she has been selling and donating her breast milk as a way to, you know, for a while there was like a whole formula shortage going on and she was trying to help out by selling and donating her breast milk so that other babies could have milk which is like, that's a good thing. Like, I can criticize Abby all day, but the act of donating your breast milk to help others who might need it, that's great. I'm, I'm happy for her for that. What I'm not so happy about is that when you go over here, see how there's a little comment thing? Let's see, you click here. There's no comments on this. That wasn't what it was like a couple hours ago. And the reason being that all the comments were creeps. There were just a bunch of creepy dudes going on this, like, where is this for sale, Abby? Can you send me the link? Can I buy it? Where can I buy this? I want to drink the titty milk. Like, it was just really, really gross. So, like, y'all, if you are out here, we, you can criticize, criticize Abby's beliefs if you want. Criticize her actions. Do not sexually harass her. That is gross, and I will never support that. So, anyway, that was gross. But regardless of that, you, you would think that since maybe she should be able to be empathetic to this struggle, to the difficulties of being objectified and things like that, you would think maybe she wouldn't want to be the titty police and trying to police other people's boobs. But that is not the case. In fact, Abby is trying to police people's chests and what proportion of chest and fat and breast tissue they must have, okay? Because here is what she tweeted. I ended up quote tweeting this and replying to it and then my mom got involved. And you know it's gonna be a fun day when your mom decides to get involved in the fight you're having with Classically Abby on Twitter because my mom barely knows how to use the internet and she's over here like, yeah, Savvy, go Savvy, take her down. My mom texted me and called her Classical Asshole and she also called her Class Holy Abby. <laughs> my mom was not happy with how rude Classically Abby was being, okay? So here is what Classically Abby tweeted. She said, Followed a brand on Instagram that helps scars fade postpartum. Yesterday, they reposted their product being used by a young woman to fade her mastectomy scars after transitioning. 
a perfectly healthy young woman whose breast had been removed, immediate unfollow, despicable. So first of all, there's that meme that goes, this is not an airport, you don't need to announce your departure. You can unfollow things on the internet without having to tell everyone about it. Also, if she wanted to, you know, really degrade this brand and she truly felt that this brand should not be getting publicity for this, like she didn't even tell us what it was. So it's like, I guess maybe she was worried that people would follow it after that because she's known for like outrage baiting as opposed to having any actual positive influence on people. So anyway, I was angry when I saw this for a couple reasons. First of all, as we will see in the comments, as some trans people have pointed out, Abby is likely misgendering this person. We don't know for certain because I don't know any details. I don't know what brand this is and I can't look this up. But what a lot of, since she has this after transitioning thing here and talks about somebody getting breast tissue removed, it's more likely that this is a trans man than a trans woman just because that's normally the surgery that someone would get when they're a trans man is to get top surgery to get this removed, right? So a lot of people are saying that it said said her mastectomy scars and a young woman that it seemed like Abby was calling this person a woman just to be dismissive of the fact that they were more than likely a trans man and would probably be a young man to fade his mastectomy scars. Now, I don't know that for certain because I don't know the details of the situation, but that's one thing that a lot of people pointed out. So regardless, I will just say a person and their mastectomy scars because I don't know. But Abby is mad here saying that, you know, a healthy person had their breasts removed and that's what Abby has an issue with. Now, why does Abby have an issue with that? Well, we know Abby is anti-LGBTQ. We know that about her. But I, I don't get what the issue is with getting breasts removed. And I actually got quite offended by this because a lot of this, you know, anti-trans rhetoric also hurts cisgender women like myself. It hurts everybody. And I mean, yes, I'm mad at it for hurting trans women and trans men just based on the fact that I don't want anybody to be hurt and I care about other people. But like, even on a personal level, like it's also harmful. Like people try to try to present this like anti-trans rhetoric as it's going to protect women. It's not. I don't feel protected by it. In fact, I often feel more threatened by anti-trans rhetoric because at its core, it's always trying to infantilize women and put people into gendered boxes. And I want to just have the freedom to live my life and do whatever with my body that I so choose. So I'm on the side of autonomy for all of us. So that's when I got mad because getting my boobs made smaller literally saved my life, dude. So as you guys know, I got breast reduction. I had huge boobies. I can put some pictures on the screen of what they used to look like. Huge boobies, okay? I have scoliosis. I was having terrible back pain. I was struggling with athletic things. I couldn't run or do jumping jacks or anything because the weight on my chest was just too much and it would like cause me so many back problems. And then even if I didn't have scoliosis, even if I didn't have back and shoulder pain and all of that, I still would have wanted to get breast reduction surgery solely because of the dysphoria and mental health angle of it. The fact that my body I knew was wrong. Like when I'd see it in the mirror, I would say, this is wrong. The fact that I have these boobs that are the size of my head is not how this should be. I don't feel right about this. And I've not only felt physically better since my surgery, I have also just felt more confident in the person that I am. Like, I know that my body is right for me as a person right now, and I just, I feel good about myself. And I think that everyone deserves to be able to feel that way. It's like, people can get nose jobs too if they want to. People can get any kind of surgery to do whatever they want to with their own body because we're all individual humans and should be allowed to do whatever we want. And so Abby's over here being like, nope, if you're getting healthy breast tissue removed, you are despicable. And I got pissed at that. So here's what I replied. And then I'll show you my quote sheet as well. I replied and I said, I've had healthy breast tissue removed. Because here's the thing, is they always try to frame it as mutilation. It's like, oh, this is a healthy person who got breast tissue removed. If it wasn't a medical necessity and you got healthy breast tissue removed, like if it was a mastectomy for cancer, okay, that's life-saving. But if you got healthy breast tissue removed, which like completely ignores the fact that mental health is a huge part of things as well and our brains are part of our bodies and our brains often determine how we feel about a lot of things and that our brains and bodies work together in a lot of ways that even a lot of doctors haven't figured out yet because humans are extremely complex, but we do know how to give people better qualities of life. So if you can have a better quality of life after having a certain surgery, like go ahead and do it. It's not hurting anybody else. Anyway, so I told Abby, I've had healthy breast tissue removed and I'm a non-trans 
female from birth woman. I mean, the short way to say that would be cisgender woman, but I, I wanted to, I didn't think Abby maybe knew what that meant. And here's the thing, a lot of people will claim ignorance about what that means, but there's also a lot of people that just genuinely misunderstand what you mean when you say you're a cis person. Some people think they mean, they think it means straight, which I'm not straight. Or some people think it means like, part of like the trans spectrum or something when it's not it's the opposite of that it's like cisgender is to transgender what heterosexual is to homosexual right that's that's kind of it's just the opposite of it but a lot of people don't know that so i wanted to explain it in as clear of terms as i possibly could i was like abby i am someone who's not trans i am a assigned female at birth woman and i've also had healthy breast tissue removed okay i said breast reduction has made my life better in every way why are you against people making their own choices for their own bodies how does someone else removing healthy breast tissue affect you? Abby, why are you the booby police right now? Why are you being the breast tissue police? Who, who made you the queen of the boobies, Abby? Okay. So I got lots of likes and my mom showed up. Shout out to my mom who says, I'm her mother and I totally supported her through this. Who are you and what medical training do you have to decide what is best for anyone else? You are the despicable one. Look in the mirror, Missy. And I posted this on Instagram and everyone thought the Missy part was the funniest. They're like, oh my God, Sammy's mom is on Twitter calling someone else Missy. It was so funny, okay? And then, then this reply, Savvy, your mom rocks. Abby, one of my best friends who was a cis woman, had a breast reduction because of issues ranging from not being able to find clothes that fit to suffering from frequent back pain. Oh, hey, that's very similar to me. Why are you against this? Okay? This person's just like, because she's transphobic, which is true. Abby's very transphobic. But then someone replied and started arguing with my mom, trying to claim that breast reduction is fine, but trans surgeries are not. Which, like, why is my surgery better than anyone else's surgery? Everyone should be able to get whatever surgery they want or need to make their own life better. And it's none of my business. I'm not their doctor. Like, anyway. So then this person shows up. This person right here, whose name is Hay. So it's like, are you a real person or a bot over here? Hey. Hey says, no one ever said they don't support breast reduction. We do not support the trans delusion being pushed on our kids. Okay, so first of all, where did kids come into play with any of this? Who has ever pushed being trans on a kid? If anything, when you're a kid, it's harder to transition because you don't have access to most of the medical services yet because you're still a child and you haven't gone through puberty, right? Who has ever pushed being trans onto a kid? I did a review uh, the other week of Matt Walsh's book, What is a Woman? where he tried to make these arguments about trans people pushing the LGBTQ agenda on kids, but all I saw was that like schools will teach kids things that are age appropriate for them. So like, for example, you know, there'll be like LGBTQ things in the sense that, okay, if your teacher is married to someone of the same gender, they might explain to you in a child friendly way that sometimes people of the same gender get married to each other. And then like, sometimes there might be a kid, it's a very small percentage of kids, but every once in a while, there'll be a kid who will say, hey, I don't think I'm supposed to be, let's say, for example, I don't think I'm supposed to be a boy, I think I'm supposed to be a girl. And then that kid will maybe go by a different name, which like, it's not that hard to go by a different name because, you know, classically Abby goes by Abby. Her assigned name at birth was Abigail Shapiro, but now she goes by Abby, which is different than Abigail. And her last name is Roth, which is her husband's last name. So she goes by Abby Roth now, neither of which is Abigail Shapiro, even though that was her assigned name at birth, right? Like you can change your name. Okay, so in a lot of cases for kids, that all that's all it's going to be is changing their name or going by like a nickname. They don't even normally legally change their name. That happens later, like when you're an adult or sometimes a teenager. And then in addition to that, they might just dress in a way that makes them feel more comfortable, which honestly, regardless of if you're trans or not, you should be able to dress in a way that makes you the most comfortable. Even if you're like a boy and you just want to wear a dress because you just like it, like why, who's the clothes police, right? Like just let people live their life, dude. That's all I'm saying. Wee -woo, wee -woo, wee -woo. Also, kids were mentioned nowhere in this tweet in the first place because the original thing was about scars fading postpartum and then mastectomy scars fading. If you're talking about kids as in like, I guess theoretically you could have a teenager that was pregnant and had a postpartum scars or you could have a teenager that had a mastectomy, but that's very uncommon. More than likely, this product is being primarily used by adults. So I don't understand where kids came into play here at all. This person said, 
and 75% change their mind by the time they're adults. Matt Walsh said it was 82%. Neither of these statistics, I can find anything backing these up. There is no statistic that the majority of people grow out of gender dysphoria. I've never seen that. I've tried fact checking this and what I've been able to find is that there have been studies where people will grow out of, they'll grow out of gender nonconformity, but that's not to mean that they ever identified as trans in the first place. Like you might, for example, have like a three-year-old boy who loves to wear princess dresses and play dolls with his sister or something. And then the parents will include them in that study as a potentially trans child. And then that kid doesn't ever grow up to be trans because he was never trans in the first place. So most people don't grow out of like being trans and having gender dysphoria. Most people might change their interests later in life, but the majority of kids surveyed in these cases were never trans to begin with. So there's, th that, that statistic is not true. And I've heard it being stated from anywhere from like a statistic in the 60s to something in the 80s. None of that has ever been documented to be true. People who actually declare themselves trans and go through with trans surgeries and trans medical treatment, the regret rate for it is estimated at one to two percent, sometimes even less than one percent. That's much lower than the regret rate for people giving birth to children. That's much lower than the regret rate for people who get tattoos. That's lower than the regret rate for, you know, women who get breast implants to make their breasts bigger, which are all, once again, things that are fine to do because you can make your own choices with your own bodies. I have 13 tattoos. Do you think I still love all of them as much as I did when I got them? No, but like, that doesn't mean that tattoos shouldn't exist. Like, just let people do whatever they want, dude. It's not your business. So first of all, for the 75% thing, I just said citation needed. And I said, Abby specifically said she had an issue with someone removing healthy breast tissue. Why would my surgery be okay, but a trans person's wouldn't? Both of us are removing healthy breast tissue, which Abby specifically said was the problem. And this person was just like, you may reread my past tweet as many times as you would like to understand. And I was like, I did reread your past tweet. I then asked you clarifying questions on your tweet. And so I told this person to just answer my question. She specifically stated it was trans boob chopping. Oh, I'm sorry. Trans boob chopping is different than every other kind of boob chopping. I'm allowed to get my breasts removed as long as I don't identify as a man when I do it, right? That's, that's okay. Like, what? what? What is the difference? It's all just boob chopping. I already explained this. We don't support mental illness. Okay. What do you mean by that? Do you mean that you don't support people getting treatment for issues that affect their mental health? So what do, you, what do you mean support mental illness? So first of all, being transgender itself is not a mental illness, just like being LGBTQ in any way is not a mental illness. It's a demographic. There are mental health diagnoses you can get for gender dysphoria within the DSM, but it's not considered a mental illness. It is considered, you know, a condition the same way that something like, you know, autism is not a mental illness, but it is a condition you can be diagnosed with, but it's not a mental illness in the same, or I'm, we're just talking categorization here. It's not a mental illness like something else would be. Now, again, even if something is a mental illness though, you should still support treatment for it because like I have OCD and that's a mental illness, right? I also have ADHD, which I don't believe is classified as a mental illness. I think it's just classified as like a neurodivergence, but I'm not a doctor. What do I know? Anyway, my point is I take medications for both of these things because you can still support treatment for things that have to do with your mental view of the world. So being trans is not a mental illness to begin with, but even if a lot of the perception of how you want your body to be comes from something that affects your mental health, so for example, you are extremely depressed because your body can't be the way that you know it should be, you should still be able to get treatment that helps with that, and it has been found time and time again that the most effective treatment for that is to allow people to just have their bodies however they want them to be. So we don't support mental illness what does that even mean? And how does that even relate? Like, that doesn't make any sense. You don't support people being able to get medical treatment that makes their life better? That's fucking stupid. So I said, you still haven't answered me. I asked him why my surgery was okay, but a trans person wouldn't be. We're both removing healthy breast tissue. What about the surgery itself is wrong for them, but not me? One is for medical purposes. One is encouraging mental illness. I still don't get, I don't get how it's encouraging. Me like, what does that mean? <laughs> it's sad you follow classically Abby just to tear her opinions down. 
So first of all, I replied and I said, I enjoy some of her content. I don't enjoy when she wants to prohibit others from living their lives. Do you think surgery is only acceptable for certain reasons? Do you think it shouldn't be allowed for someone who wants to get a nose job or plastic surgery because they want to? Why? And of course, this person just stopped answering me. But I was over here like, like this person said one is for medical purposes. All surgeries are medical. When you say for medical purposes, first of all, how do you know my surgery was for medical purposes? I never even stated that I had scoliosis or back pain in my original tweet. I just said that I got breast tissue removed and it's made my life better. That could mean that it made my mental health better, which it did because I did experience dysphoria with my body from knowing that my chest shouldn't be as large as it is and just knowing that the person I was seeing was not was not me. And I don't know how to explain that because to someone saying like, well, obviously it's you. You're just mentally ill if you didn't think it was you. Like I looked in the mirror and I said, that is not, that is not savvy. That is not the, the embodiment of who savvy should be. Okay. I knew that. And I don't know how I knew it. And it's very hard to explain that to other people. But the truth is doctors recognize this. Mental health professionals understand this. And that's why there are surgeries available for these things because people know it will make people's lives better. So I got it in part for mental health reasons. That's not encouraging mental illness. That's treating symptoms that make your mental health worse. That is medical treatment in the positive direction. So I was just getting so mad over here and how rude this person was being. But it seems like most people were calling Abby out for being the booby police. Now, this person's just being gross over here. Imagine giving a shit what someone else does with their body. Agreed. Why are you so worried about someone's titties, Abby? Agreed. Here's what I quote tweeted over here, okay? So I said, if we're only allowed to keep our natural bodies as they are, why were you okay with it? I didn't mean mastectomy scars. She was talking about postpartum scars, which... I guess could also be a mistake, not mastectomy, but they could also be breast scars from like stretch marks or I guess they could be like stretch marks in the abdomen area. But I was like, by your logic, those are perfectly healthy scars. We're allowed to use medicines for cosmetic purposes only when you personally like it. So I'm over here like, okay, Abby, you said that someone getting healthy breast tissue removed is an issue and that you shouldn't be able to fade your scars through that, but it's fine to fade your scars that you get postpartum. Why is it okay in that case? but it's not okay in another case. Because the whole argument here seems to once again come from the appeal to nature fallacy, which is the whole idea that if something happens naturally, it's inherently better, which again is the same stupid ass argument that multi-level marketing sellers use to try to get us to eat essential oils instead of going to the doctor. Because my thing comes from nature and isn't a chemical. It's stupid, okay? It's not a real argument because just because something is natural doesn't mean it's automatically better. Fire is natural. Should we be setting things on fire? Arsenic is natural. Should we eat arsenic? No. Just because something is natural doesn't mean it's better. That's why we have things like modern medicine that save people's lives, that if you just let people live out the rest of their life naturally without medical intervention, they would die. So... No, something being natural doesn't make it better. So that's why I don't get this idea of like, oh, well, this is the puberty that you went through naturally and the body that you naturally had. Therefore, you should have to keep it that way. Otherwise, it's automatically wrong. There is absolutely no logical basis for that. So I'm over here like, okay, Abby is saying that this person was despicable for getting their breasts removed because they were perfectly healthy or whatever. But okay, it's, it's okay. But by nature, Abby, you had a child and by, by, by the natural process of giving birth, why should you be allowed to fade your scars? Why should you be, why were you following a, a scar removal cream in the first place? Those scars came about naturally. It's, it's mutilation to take away the scars that nature gave you. That's despicable, isn't it? Like, how far are you willing to extend that? Or is it only just based on things you personally don't like? This person says here, I know of at least three cis women who had double mastectomies while they were in perfect health due to having the BCRA1 gene. So I guess in Abby's world, they shouldn't have because there's nothing wrong with them. So that's a thing too. Like a lot of people will get double mastectomies if they have like a history of breast cancer in their family or they want to do something preventative to not have to worry about that. And instead of having to wait for something to potentially happen to them to put them in the hospital or something. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It doesn't matter if you're trans, if you're not trans, if you are a woman, if you're a man. So there are some cisgender men who have gynecomastia and get mastectomies, for lack of a better word, because they want the breast tissue that is growing on their chest to be gone. There's plenty of reasons to get a surgery that's a mastectomy or a breast reduction or anything along those lines. 
And it, all of those reasons are valid and should be respected. In fact, I would go so far as to say that whatever anyone does with their own goddamn body is not my fucking business. And neither is it yours, Abby. So anyway, I was just mad that Abby was being the, the booby police, okay? Now, as luck would have it, of course, as soon as I finished filming this video, Abby decided to post something else that was relevant to the topic at hand. Guys, this has happened to me so many times. I don't know if you remember, but back in early 2020, when JK Rowling first started being a turf on the internet, I made this video called JK Rowling is a turf where all I did was react to the turfy thing she said on Twitter and then I posted it on YouTube and then literally an hour later she dropped her giant turf manifesto and then everyone in the comments was like why didn't you talk about the giant turf manifesto and I'm like oh look at the timestamps because I didn't know yet and then remember the time that I filmed a video about the don't say gay bill and the second I finished filming the video I went on Twitter and what do we know an hour ago it got signed into law amazing how that happens or remember the time I spent hours hours and hours filming a video about Matt Walsh's book, What is a Woman?, where I did an in-depth review of it. And then as soon as I finished spending hours and hours filming this video, I went on Twitter only to find Matt Walsh having a clip of himself on a radio show defending teenage pregnancy. You guys remember how this keeps happening to me? Anyway, this happened once again because I filmed this video in advance. And then as soon as I finished filming it, Abby dropped a new video on her channel called How to Look Modest and Attractive with a Bigger Chest. So I decided to react to it because because obviously, if Abby is being the boob police, then we need to know what she has to say about this as well. So in just a second, we're going to take a look at her video. I haven't watched the whole thing yet, but I have watched pieces of it. And guys, I gotta say, while there are parts that I find really frustrating and completely disagree with, there's also some decent advice in here. As you guys probably know, as I've probably already said in this video, I don't remember, I filmed this, the original part weeks ago, I was someone who really struggled with how to dress with a bigger chest for a long time. And maybe I'll give some of the advice that I came up with as well for that. I mean, now I'm just grateful that I can fit into clothes off the rack. That's what a good breast reduction surgery will do for you. But not everyone wants to go down that path. Not everyone has scoliosis. Some people like their chests the way they are. And everyone deserves to be able to dress however they want, right? So I, again, if somebody wants to dress modestly, and again, de de defining the word modest is going to to depend a lot on your personal values and the culture you grew up in and what that means to everyone is going to be a little different. Like, I don't think having a little cleavage showing is automatically not modest. Abby does. We have different standards of modesty. However, if you are someone who says, you know what, I want an outfit that's going to flatter my figure, that is going to be form-fitting and fit me well, I do have a bigger chest and I don't want too much of that to be showing, I need some fashion advice. I will say what she said in this video is fairly accurate and was advice that I would use for myself as well. But of course, the underlying message of you have to be modest above all else is also still kind of an issue. But let's take a look at what Abby herself has to say in this video and uh, see if we can learn anything more about some boobs. Take it away, Abby. Yeah, take it away. Hello, Classic Crew, and welcome to today's video. Where hey, we're going Abby, to be talking about how to be attractive and modest with a bigger chest. If you are new to my channel, here we talk about classic living and traditional values, and I would love if you would consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. If you'd like access to a ton of exclusive content, including my book club, my AV club, my Zoom girl chats, and a weekly article, make sure to head over to classicallyabby.substack.com. I recently got an email from someone who is a subscriber on my Substack asking me about how to dress modestly with a bigger bust, and kind of discussing how it can be unfair that women with a different body type can wear something that's more clingy, more low cut, and it would still be within the realm of modest, and if you have a bigger chest, that's not accessible to you. And I I actually agree with Abby here to an extent. I think that the issue here is how prescriptive some social roles of what counts as modesty are. But I will say I agree with her on the point that a lot of times someone who has a bigger chest and someone who has a smaller chest could wear the exact same outfit and even sized up proportionally to fit their bodies. However, just by the fact that one person has a bigger chest, something more form-fitting, other people are going to judge them. Now, I don't, I, I agree with Abby that it is unfortunate that that situation happens. I disagree that the fault is on the person wearing the clothes. I think, I personally think that it's the fault of people judging someone for wearing the clothes. So I think, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder and all of that. Everyone deserves the right to look however they want and not face judgment from the public. But that's how I see it, you know. And again, if you are someone who wants to dress in this traditionally modest type of way where you're not showing a lot of skin, but you st still do want flattering outfits, I agree, you do need style guides for that kind of thing as well because it can be really difficult. So 
I will say she's on the right track, even if I don't agree 100%. Give credit where it's due. I totally get it. I mean, I, I live with that problem. <laughs> but yeah. I also think that modesty is really important, and I embrace modesty, and I think it's a really beautiful thing. So Yeah, and that's Abby has every right to make that choice for herself. I completely support that. Today, I actually want to give some tips on how to dress modestly with a big chest, but it will still look attractive and beautiful and not just covering everything up and wearing things that make you look like a tent because that. So when it comes to the tent thing, I agree. Uh, we had a name for this in the mid 2000s. It was called tit curtains. Tit for tit. I don't know if you guys remember tit curtains. Tit curtains was the bane of my existence, okay? Because if you guys remember like the mid 2000s and early 2010s, these styles of shirts that were in style for women were often like these big flowy tops that, you know, they flowed out. I don't know, I'll see if I can find some pictures and some examples. I could never wear those. And they were all in the cool stores that the cool teen girls shopped at. They were in the Forever 21. What other stores did teen girls shop at in the in the 2000s? I don't know, American Eagle. They were all in those type of stores. And that was, that was what was cool at the time. And if you had a large chest, they didn't really look good because it created tick curtains where you just, you just looked like you were a tent. She's absolutely right about that. Because when, when the biggest part of your body's up here and then, then it flows down from you like this, it flows outward and it makes you look like you have a tent shape. I personally don't think that's a flattering shape for me personally. But then again, like I've said, everyone has the right to dress however they want. So if you find that to be, if you like dressing in a tent shape, power to you, I won't judge. I just didn't like the look for me and I could use a fashion guide like this. So I agree. We call that tit curtains over here. It's a real risk. Let me tell you, a real risk with She's having a chest is wearing stuff that will make you look heavier than you are because it doesn't taper in and show that you have a smaller waist or a smaller figure. So I'm excited to get into today's video. I, I agree and disagree. I don't think that having a smaller figure is necessarily, I don't think it's unflattering to not have a smaller figure. I think that overall women come in a variety of sizes and I think the idea that women have to be smaller or that being small is an ideal for women. I'm just not a fan of that because I don't think the idea that men have to be bigger and physically larger is, that's just, I just don't think that that's a necessity. I, I, on average, statistically averagely, yes, men are, are physically larger than women, but not 100% of the time. And I think that if you're a woman who's larger than a man or you're larger compared to other women, there's nothing wrong with that. I think a variety of body sizes and shapes can find clothes that are flattering. So I don't automatically think that making yourself look smaller always has to be the goal to look flattering. However, embracing your shape and showing off the shape that you have can absolutely provide some benefits. So. It's not necessarily that you need you will need to look like you're small, but more so that if you want to show off the fact that your body has a certain curvy shape, like if you have an hourglass shape and you want to show off that hourglass shape, that's going to show, you know, larger bust than smaller waist than larger hips, and that's the body type that you want to show off, then yeah, you're going to have to dress in clothes that accentuate that versus if you want to show off the fact that you have a larger waist and smaller hips or something, if that's the body type that you want to emphasize, then you're going to have to dress in a way for that. So I think dressing for the body shape that you want to most emphasize is what's important. And the advice that she gets into, I don't think is bad. And let's, let's start chatting about it. Okay, so the first thing that I want to chat about is recognizing that your body can cross over into sexy very easily, which is a compliment to your body type. I think when a bigger busted woman sees a what? woman who's a little bit more straight up and down or has a smaller chest you wearing something it? that we wish we could wear, we, we get jealous. We feel like, oh, I just want to be able to wear that clothing. Why is that's relatable. That is relatable. Before I got breast reduction surgery, I would just be jealous of anyone who could wear a dress, anyone who could wear a romper, anyone who could wear overalls, anyone who could wear clothes that were supposed to fit the top half and bottom half of your body the same. You guys, you won't believe how much I love wearing dresses or wearing rompers or wearing overalls, wearing jumpsuits, wearing things that are supposed to fit the entirety of your body at once. I quite enjoy that now that I have a body that's proportional. So I completely agree. It can be very difficult to wear those, to wear certain types of clothes. However, I think that Abby puts things into boxes a little too easily sometimes where she talks about this can cross over from modest into sexy too quickly. It's like, okay, but who determines the line of what sexy is? Isn't that kind of relative based on people's individual standards? Is showing a little bit of cleavage automatically sexy? Is showing a lot of cleavage automatically sexy? Like at what point does it become sexual? Because that's the thing I've talked about on this channel before, right? Like a lot of a lot of cultures don't find breasts to be inherently sexual. A lot of places it's considered normal to breastfeed in church because some cultures view the breasts as a feeding mechanism above all else. I also don't think that that's necessarily 
the way to go about it because I don't think viewing women's bodies primarily for utility is, is the right solution either. However, my point is that what someone considers sexy is going to vary a lot based on circumstance, so I don't think it's as easy as saying your body looks attractive in a modest way in this case, but attractive in a sexy way in this case. I think that's way oversimplifying it. Is everyone putting on me that I have to wear something different to <laughs> yeah, be modest so she can wear the exact same thing and look, and look modest and I can't. Completely the agree. truth is, is that it should be a compliment to you that your body type is one that can take something that might just look like a shirt on someone else and look very sexy on you. You have a very beautiful- Wait, so I'm a little confused here. I thought Abby thought that looking sexy was a bad thing, but now she's saying you should take it as a compliment. Okay, she's saying you should take it as a compliment that your body will look sexy in this outfit. Your hair looks sexy pushed back but also you still shouldn't wear it. Like it's a compliment, but you shouldn't wear it because you do still don't want to look sexy, even though looking sexy is theoretically a good thing, but also looking sexy is a bad thing because it's immodest. I'm really lost on what the point of that is. Like she's saying take it as a compliment that your body type is sexy, but also you don't want to show that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having a lot of trouble piecing this together in my head. You don't want to show that you have a sexy body type, but you want to be flattered by having a sexy body type as long as no one knows it but you. What what is what is the what is the end goal here? I, I'm really lost. I don't know if the point is to suffer. I know that that's in in religious communities and not just in religious communities. Also in lots of diet culture type of communities, hustle culture type of communities. In general, I think humans tend to find suffering to be virtuous in some way. So the whole idea that it's like take as a compliment the fact that your body is this good. You shouldn't be allowed to show it to other people, though, because you still have to make a sacrifice because suffering is virtuous. That's what I'm, is that what she's getting at here? Because this is very confusing otherwise. Oh, body. And that is why you can't wear certain things that another woman can wear and just not look as sexy. When you have a lot of curves, then you do have to be a little bit more judicious about what you wear, because when you wear certain things, you are going to look very attractive and attracting. I am pro looking attractive. I think it's nice to, to look beautiful, but attracting, like attracting attention to your figure, that is not as conducive to getting what you really want. When people are distracted by your figure, then- See, this is the part where she completely confuses me because what does she mean by attractive versus attracting? Like, I know she's saying that I like to look beautiful, but not sexy. And I know that that's what she means by it. You don't want to draw attention to your body. You want to flatter your shape, but you don't want to cross the line of flattering your shape too much. There's a specific line and only Abby knows where it is. Like things that are, she's, I think she's trying to oversimplify it and make it way more cut and dry than it is. Plus, I'm not sure what she means by conducive to getting what you really want. Because, I mean, unless you're walking around naked, <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I don't know. If someone is, is harassing you because of the way that you're dressed, that's on them for being a gross pervert. And I mean, Abby knows this because I've made a video in the past how even when Abby has covered up her entire body, she has still gotten excessive sexual harassment. Even the comments of this very video, she's getting sexual harassment. Like people give her sexual harassment constantly. So she knows that it doesn't have anything to do with the way that you dress or the way that you present yourself. If you're getting harassed, that's because there's creepy people in the world who want to do that. That and I think that some people just find the fact that Ben Shapiro has a hot sister to be funny because Ben Shapiro is so annoying. But it's also like, while I think that Abby does net harm to the world with the views that she spreads, I also don't think it's fair to harass her because it's it's funny that Ben Shapiro has a hot sister. Like, she didn't ask to be Ben Shapiro's sister. And I know that she does support him in a lot of ways, but still, like, I'm just saying don't sexually harass women at all under any circumstances. That's all what I'm saying here. And maybe they're not really talking to you and they're getting distracted by your body and not getting in touch with you and your personality. So even though- I mean, that can happen regardless of what you're wearing. That just has to do with whether the person you're talking to is an asshole. And his cousin? He's an asshole too, sir. Gun is made first class Philip asshole. Oh, it's really frustrating that you can't just pick up anything that someone else could wear and put it on because it will be more low cut on you. It'll show more cleavage. It'll show more curves recognize that that's because you have a very beautiful body. Now, that's not to say that someone with a smaller chest has an ugly body, not at all. I think that you can have a beautiful figure across a range and across a spectrum of I all different that. kinds of body types. Completely but agree. if you are curvy and you have a bigger chest, you will veer into sexy territory more quickly than someone who has a different body type than you do. And with that in mind, that leads us to number two, which is aim for beautiful over sexy. I think it's really easy when you have a body type that does veer into sexy territory to lean into that and to want to look more sexy. 
I really just want her to get to the specific fashion advice because this stuff over here is just her telling us how we have to live our life and being like, don't get into sexy territory. You're not allowed to go there. It's like, okay, Abby, I, I feel like if people are watching this video in good faith, like people who are watching this video because they actively want to learn don't want to be lectured about not being sexy. Like this part feels like rage bait. That's, that's what this feels like. When she gets into the actual advice, it's not bad. But like this whole part just feels like rage bait. It's like if someone already doesn't want to be considered sexy, you don't have to tell them that. Ugly. Because it's easy. But what is actually better and takes a little bit more skill is- Oh my god, you know, what is what is better? What is better by your standards? What is better for you? Might not be better for me, might not be better for another person. When I had large boobs, I mean my boobs still aren't small, but like when they were massive, when they were the size of my head, when they were disproportionately large, I liked to show them off all the time. Not because I liked them really, because they were more of a inconvenience to me than anything, but just because I thought that was the way that my body looked best in certain outfits, and I, I just mostly showed them off all the time. And because it was really hard to avoid when I wore like sports bras and stuff. So, no, I don't think there's an issue with that. Dressing in ways that are beautiful. Dressing in ways that are flattering, that accentuate certain beautiful parts of your body, but don't make the focus how sexy your body looks. So if you can focus on looking really beautiful, then you can choose clothing that you love that is attractive, but doesn't make the focus these sexy features. Okay, number three is a piece of practical advice, and that is wear- Good, practical advice, get to it, yes, yes. A v-neck with a cami underneath. So v-neck- Agree, yes, I agree, yes, 100%, yes, I agree with that, yes. ...are very good if you have a bigger chest, because if you wear something really high-necked, sometimes that can make your chest look even bigger, whereas wearing something v-neck tricks the eye into thinking that your chest actually looks a little bit smaller, but instead of- I agree with V-necks, 100%. Okay, when I had, so what I'm wearing now, I, I would sometimes wear a shirt like this when I had the huge boobs, but normally I did wear V-necks because I think it really did, you know, flatter the shape in the way that like when you have a V-neck or a neckline that goes like a little bit, a little bit lower without necessarily plunging all the way down, it shows your body type with having your boobs closer to the neckline. So the closer they are to the neckline, the higher up on your body they look. Whereas if you wear like a turtleneck or even like a mock turtleneck or even just a shirt with a uh, like a regular t-shirt uh, neckline, it makes your chest, because your chest is so big, it is farther away from the neckline and that makes it look like it's closer to your center, which makes you look like your center is giant boobs. And when your center is giant boobs, it makes you look more round shaped in general. That is what I noticed. So if I wanted to show off what my specific body figure was, which wasn't round shaped, it was, you know, hourglass shaped, I would normally choose a neckline where the neckline ended closer to the top of my boobies than than to my collarbone, if that makes sense. So I would do things like that. I completely agree with the v-neck. And I think that the camisole idea is not bad if you are someone who is really uncomfortable with cleavage showing. So I'm not really uncomfortable with cleavage showing. I've never been uncomfortable with it. So I would just wear a v-neck by itself. But, but if you are watching this video because you don't want any cleavage showing and that isn't something that you're comfortable with, absolutely fine. That is your personal decision and you should wear the outfits that make you feel the most confident and comfortable with yourself. So if you want to wear that type of shape of a neckline that is a good neckline but if you don't want the cleavage showing wearing a, a small undershirt even like a mock camisole kind of thing that you can pin in or some type of thin undershirt can can do a lot i i agree with this advice 100 percent and think it is very useful i wish she just kind of led with this get to the point instead of just wearing a v-neck and then immediately drawing attention to your cleavage because that's what's going to happen wear a cami underneath to cover your cleavage so you're getting the visual it. of a v-neck but you're also staying modest by covering your cleavage i do this all the time. I have a ton of, of camis that I wear. One of them is actually very close to my skin tone, so it doesn't detract from the neckline, but it does cover up what I would like covered up. And that allows- I think that's fantastic advice. ...you to remain attractive and beautiful, but modest at the same time. I wish she didn't have the value judgments about it allows you to remain attractive and beautiful, but modest at the same time. Like these are opinions rather than like, these are opinionated categorizations she's doing. So I wish she didn't have that prescriptive type of thing. I wish she would just give the fashion advice, maybe show a few outfits. And then I think that would make this a better video because I do agree with that tip. And you're doing something that actually is very flattering for your bigger bust, but yeah. doesn't lead people to look right into your cleavage. Yeah, Number four is wear dresses that cinch in at the waist. Boom! I agree completely. I agree 100% on this because I didn't wear a lot of dresses when I had a large chest because by the time I was ready to get surgery, my chest was so large at that point that I really had to, I couldn't really find dresses that came in at the waist but also could fit over my chest in the first place unless they were really stretchy material, which then would be like skin tight, which I know Abby is not a fan of. But I did sometimes get them altered. I sometimes would get them uh, tailored. 
And there would be times that if I could find an outfit that's cinched in at the waist, either that or wearing a top, a tighter top, or you know what, I will give a recommendation to a store right now that Abby would probably hate because it is a store that is run by butch lesbians that makes clothes for the LGBTQ community, but it is a store called Gender Free World. I used to have an affiliate code for them in my description. I don't think they do affiliate stuff anymore. However, I've worn a ton of button downs from this shop because they make button downs according to body type instead of by gender. So they don't separate clothes into men's and women's clothes. Instead, they separate clothes into four different body types. And one of the body types was having a significantly larger chest than your waist. So if that was the body type that you had, you could measure yourself and find the, sh the size that went with that shape and then buy that shape and that size. And then you buttoned it up. And then in addition to the buttons on the outside of the shirt, it would also have like additional buttons inside to help button on the chest so that they wouldn't pull apart. It was life-changing. Honestly, I can pop up some pictures on the screen of me wearing their shirts. I will continue to wear their shirts now after my breast reduction because, I mean, my, my chest is still kind of, I'd say still bigger than average, but not not like excessively large like it was before. So I can wear their shirts in slightly smaller sizes, but their shirts have been really helpful for me because they do have that body shape available where they have more room in the chest and then they come in at the waist, which does show the hourglass figure. Nowadays, I am trying to wear dresses that do the same thing because I can actually fit into dresses. And I think that having dresses that come in at the waist really does show off an hourglass figure. And I personally love having an hourglass figure. So I think, I agree. I think that that is fantastic advice. Yeah, 100% percent Abby's right. I think that that's a really easy way to show that you have a beautiful figure in, instead of having that tent effect when you wear something baggy. No tent. When a lot of the clothes that are available to us now are <laughs> big sweaters, big shirts, dresses that have no shape and that really doesn't work great. Dude, I totally agree. I would get so frustrated because I love big baggy sweaters. I think they're so cute and cozy and I would just struggle to wear them when my chest was so huge. Not because I couldn't fit into them. It was kind of the opposite effect. I could fit into them if I bought them big enough. And then of course I would end up with the tit curtains, which wasn't really my style. On a figure with a bigger chest because it creates that tent effect where the yeah. fabric flows away from the body and it looks like the end point for your whole body is the end point of your chest. Correct. So instead wear things that center the waist, wear belts, wear, you know, things that have a seam at the Dude, I wish Abby would do more of this on her channel. I, I could do without the judgment stuff of what's modest, what's sexy, what's beautiful, what's whatever. I could do without the judgment, but giving fashion advice I think is great. I love when she gives fashion advice because Abby dress is cute. I won't, I won't lie. I think the outfit she's wearing right now is cute. Waist and then flow out so that you're constantly showing that taper effect and it can still flatter your body while not needing to be skin, skin tight. One of the things I also want to mention is that it can be frustrating that it feels like a lot of fashion today is more geared towards women who have less of a curvy body type. And I, I think agree. it's not just that women who have a less curvy body type can wear clothes that make you look sexy. It's also like vice versa, that yeah. the women who have less of a curvy body type can wear baggier things and it will look flattering on them and it will look yes. flattering on you. So that is a, a frustrating That's thing. So we're, we want to walk that fine line of wearing clothing that is fitted, but not so fitted that we see every lump and bump and that doesn't necessarily need to show off, you know, your, your, your chest. I mean, you don't want to wear things that show, like I had a friend in high school, for example, who could wear like scoop neck t-shirts and she just didn't have a very big chest. So it really just was kind of just skin up here. And if I wore that same shirt, it would be really inappropriate. So I didn't wear that shirt and she did. See, no, that's, that's the part I disagree with. If Abby feels uncomfortable wearing that shirt and showing that much chest, that is her right. And I will never say that Abby, Abby should be able to feel beautiful wearing a higher neckline, a lower, she should be able to feel beautiful however she wants. And if that kind of shirt makes her uncomfortable, she does not need to wear that. However, I disagree that it's universally inappropriate for her to wear that. If she, if we, if, if Abby changed her mind and felt like she actually did want to show a little cleavage, I don't think it would be inappropriate. And I think she should have the option to feel confident doing that. So I disagree that it's universally inappropriate. However, I do agree that it maybe wasn't the look that she was going for, in which case she should have her own options. So kind of a mixed bag. I think there's a, a more nuanced middle ground to be taken on this video. And it was annoying and it made sense. <laughs> like you can't argue with reality just because you want to be able to wear certain things that your friend is wearing. It doesn't mean that you can't because it's going to look different on you in the same way that there are some. See, I disagree with that. It is going to look, I agree, see, okay, I agree and disagree. I agree that it's going to look different and it might not fit and have the same effect that you want it to. However, if when you put it on, you still like how it looks on you, you still can wear that and that's still your choice. So I, when she says sometimes you want to wear the same things, but you just can't, I disagree with that part. It's not that you can't. It will probably look different on different body types, but if you still like the way it looks, I think that's your choice. And if people are harassing you for it, 
that is because they are assholes, and we should be discouraging people from commenting on other people's clothes choices, physical appearance, body types in general, because that really has nothing to do with who you are as a person. That's my opinion on that, which is different from Abby's, but I do agree that the clothes will look different, and that if that's not the look you're going for, then her advice is absolutely going to be more the path you should follow. Some clothes that will be flattering on you that won't be flattering on her. So that's a really good thing to remember, is that you have to accept that there are things that you just aren't going to wear. Maybe they are flattering on you, but they're too flattering. And maybe they're not flattering on you and they won't, like, they won't look good on you. Number It's just saying things you want to wear, but you can't. You absolutely can. You just might not look the same. You can wear it. If you don't want to wear it, then you don't have to. I think there's more free choice here than what Abby's getting at. Five is wear fitted tops, but not too fitted. So I have a lot of tops that I really love because- in this case, I wish she would show some examples. Maybe do like, uh, I don't know if she wants to model them or just like pull up some of the examples of clothes she has in her closet because some of this advice gets a little vague here. Fitted, but not too fitted. What does that mean? What is too fitted? Where is the line? Because it can be hard to judge that line when in Abby's mind, it is very specific that, oh, this is too tight, but this isn't too tight. That's based on a level of personal preference. And if someone is asking for fashion advice, that means they probably are struggling to find that line. So I think some more specific examples would be helpful here. They're like t-shirts, but they, they do kind of hug my body. But the fabric is not that fabric that is like, and shows everything. It mm -hmm. just hugs my curves in a way that and I, this is one reason I think that uh, moving away from fast fashion is helpful too, because I remember when I was a teenager, the world loved fast fashion. I mean, people still do, but it was all about buying things at H&M or buying things at Forever 21, buying things at those type of stores. And I guess now we still, we have an online version of that where people buy things from Sheen or people buy things from stores like that, like online stores where you buy things that basically come in bulk from China and things like that. And a lot of those clothes are made from this really thin material, which first of all, the fact that these clothes are produced so quickly, the material rips so quickly, it's bad, even though the clothes are cheap, they're still bad quality, and then it's bad for the environment that so many are produced. And I get it, I'm not going to judge anyone who buys fast fashion clothes, though, because, you know, not everyone can afford to find clothes that are, you know, long term sustainable and made from the best material. So it's kind of more of a systemic issue than everything. But I do think if you have the budget to buy some new clothes, prioritizing slow fashion type of clothes, clothes, not, they don't necessarily have to be made in the US, but clothes that are made from stronger materials and things like that can be a good choice. And that will also, I won't say show less skin in the sense that if you want to show more more of your body, you're welcome to do that. But I think that the fabric will be more, it'll cover more and be a little thicker and a little sturdier. That's how I feel in these overalls, at least. That's really not totally distracting. So if you can find tops that are fitted and that do come in under your bust so that you can show that you have a thinner waist, then that's the best option for a, a more- Here's what's tough though. Sometimes when your chest is really big, like, like what mine was before surgery, like what Abby's was like when she was pregnant. When you have a chest that is excessively large, it can be really hard to find something that comes in under your bust because unless it's a really high neckline and you're pulling it down, which is going to be an awkward fit on your shoulders, it's going to, if it comes, if it gets cinched in, it's going to end up coming in in the middle of your boob. Because if your boobs are like really, really large, a lot of things just aren't made for that. Which, again, is why I like the world of going back to getting things altered at the tailor or getting custom-made clothes. It's expensive, though, but I got a custom-made suit once, and I just, you guys know that I've talked about my custom-made suit before. I love having custom-made clothes. I think that that is the best luxury in life, but it's not, it's not uh, financially sustainable to do all the time. But my point is that, yes, it's nice to have clothes that come in. That's, again, why I think she should show some examples and why I think it would be good to talk about different measurements of things or different places where you can find these types of things. A little more advice might be helpful there because I do remember being a teenager and a young adult who had this excessively large chest and trying to find clothes that came in right underneath it, but they would come in, they would always end up coming in like right at the middle of my boobies because they were just so big that where they landed, it there wasn't enough space in the top to hold them otherwise, if that makes sense. It doesn't fit. So it could be, that could still be tough more casual shirt. Number six is wear fitted clothing with an open an open button down over the top. This is one of my favorite I agree. kind of fashion hacks is I have some dresses. This looks good. I like that. I think that is a good style. That are really fitted that if I just wore without anything over the top, it would probably be a little too sexy. And I will also say that like, 
if you have, like, when you have a really large chest, it can be hard to find button downs that button all the way to the top. So if you want something that's more flattering that comes in at the waist, then generally this, if you're going to buy it, if you're buying it like at a standard store, you're buying it off the rack, you're not getting things altered and custom made for you, then you're probably going to have clothes that come in at the waist and they fit your waist, but they won't button all the way up your chest because it'll just be too small for the size of your chest. So if you're doing that, you probably need to be wearing something under it to begin with. So wearing an open button down that is fitted to your waist and your shoulders, but maybe won't close over your chest. It's okay that it doesn't close over your chest because you have a dress under it or you have another shirt on under it or you have something like that. And I really do think that that can be a good look in that case. I completely agree with her on that. And so what I choose to wear is uh, a button down over the top or a long cardigan or something like that, yeah. that kind of creates good. space between the fitted dress and the cardigan. And then you're not getting just like the full effect of a really tight dress. Now, I think you're still getting a very flattering appearance because you're seeing that underneath that, that blouse or underneath that cardigan, you can see shape, but you're not seeing the whole shape. And I think that that's a really easy way to define your figure without drawing attention to your figure. Last but not least is wear fitted bottoms with blousier tops. So I'm not the biggest fan of just wearing big blousey tops because I do think that they are imbalanced with a bigger chest, but mm -hmm. sometimes that's all that's available. Like that is the style right now. So if you're gonna do that, wear a- I wouldn't say it's all that's available. I would say it still is harder to find things though, but yeah, it, it, can, it can be tough. It can be tough. Fitted pant, wear skinny jeans. Wear leggings if your top comes all the way down and covers your bottom. Wear things that are tight on the bottom so you can see that you have a more tapered figure um, and then a looser top because that's what's available. And then at least people can see that you are thinner than what... I don't think we need to put so much emphasis on like, it's important to be thinner. Like, yeah, I wanna show people accurately what my body type is, but I don't think having to dress to minimize your size is necessarily the only thing we need to do. I think dressing to think about what shape you're trying to create and then starting from there is what's important. That's, that's how I have to see it. Watching this video after seeing Abby policing what surgeries people are allowed to have or what people are allowed to do with their bodies, seeing her police that on Twitter, and then watching this video, to me is such a stark contrast in what she's capable of. I think it is such a shame that Abby uses her platform and her power to spread so much hate when she could be doing more videos like this. And again, I don't think that everything in this video is accurate, but I do think she was on the right track in a lot of places. And it's moments like these where I see that she has potential to have a positive impact. Doing these videos that have fashion guides for certain body types and things that you can do to create certain things. Not policing people and saying you have to dress modestly otherwise you're an immoral person. I think that that kind of angle of it by being like, you don't want to look too sexy, you'll get the wrong kind of attention and that like putting the, the victim blaming type of thing. I don't like that whatsoever, but I do think if she focused a lot more of her attention on, hey, if you're someone who wants to cover up most of your body, but you want to find things that flatter certain figures and certain shapes, here's some of my fashion advice, here's some of my vintage fashion advice, because we're classically Abby, we're about being classical on this channel, so if you want to be classical, then here are some examples of ways you can dress in like vintage styles or more old fashioned styles. You know, when I had a really large chest, I found a lot of help in looking at styles from like the 1950s and 60s because a lot of that really was focused on emphasizing the hourglass figure. So looking back to some of those classical styles and seeing how you can maybe alter those or, you know, bring them up to a more modern type of style, those kind of things can be absolutely helpful. So I think that she has something valuable to offer with being someone who is good at dressing in cute outfits, does know how to dress for her body type and things like that, being able to, you know, provide some fashion tips and things like that, or maybe making fashion lookbooks and giving advice to people. I think she does know what she's talking about here and I wish she could focus more on that and less on the moral judgment, but to an extent I almost feel like she has to outrage bait in order to get attention because that's kind of the, the grave she dug for herself. That was how she first started on the internet was by being this rage bait channel. And I mean, she's also known for her brother, Ben Shapiro, who is literally a professional rage baiter online. So I, I feel almost like she can't get out of this trap, which sucks because she really does have some advice she could offer in cases like this if she could just take away that judgmental and prejudiced angle from it. So that's what I have to say about looking modest and attractive with a bigger chest. Dress how you want, but don't feel afraid to look up fashion advice if there are certain effects that you are trying to go for.
I wasn't a fan of Abby being the boob police because I think our boobs are our own business. My boobs, my business. I can keep them, get rid of them, make them smaller, make them bigger, do whatever I want because my chest is my business and it is not your business, Abby. I was I was all happy to defend Abby against sexual harassment when she was going through that because people were talking sexually about her boobs because I was like, that is not your body. That is Abby's body and that is her business. And I was ready to defend her. I've told Abby a million times because sometimes I've had people say things like Abby's just living her life as a woman the way she wants to that doesn't mean she has internalized misogyny and Abby would go on videos and be like isn't it misogynistic of other women to claim that I have internalized misogyny just because I'm living how I want to as a woman and I've always said no I, I don't do that I've supported Abby's right to do whatever she wants. So she's made videos saying, like, feminists don't want you to be a stay-at-home mom. I said, Abby, if you want to be a stay-at-home mom, I support your right to do that. And I have supported that from the beginning. And in fact, it's often the feminists who are the ones who are more supportive of stay-at-home moms because we're the ones who are out here fighting for better maternity leave policies and companies. We're the ones out here supporting companies providing universal basic income and other things that will make it possible for families to be able to survive on one income like abby i've been supportive of all of your decisions from the beginning except when those decisions have come at the expense of other people being able to make their own decisions about their own lives so anyway abby if you're watching this don't police my boobs but do ask your brother ben if he wants to do a boxing match because i think we could make a lot of money doing three minutes in the ring you and me ben shapiro let's make it happen i will see you guys again next week for more videos in the meantime keep on supporting small businesses and keep on supporting every individual's right to do whatever they want to with their own body thanks bye get you some nuts there was lots of memes makes me wonder if i should pick up lesbianism chicago you guys asked for it